Okay, folks, I'm gonna change the front rotor here. And why am I changing the front rotor? Well, according to the Yamaha TW200 factory manual, it gives a specified thickness in which is the minimum that you should run. And when you use your front brakes a lot, as I do, and you should attempt to use more or not, whichever. I'm not trying to tell you how to ride, but I ride using my front brake quite a bit. And now it's worn out because I put the calipers on it. I put it to the specified setting in which Yamaha tells you to don't go past that amount. And um, so, yeah, I'm going to change it because I put the caliper on there and tick it, tick it, tick it, tick it, tick it. It needs changing. So, in order to get another season going, I got some new pads, I have a new rotor, and we're going to change this bad boy out. Well, as you can see, I have set my 0.12 of an inch and I kind of got some play on the front rotor. So, I think it's time, according to the math, to actually put a new rotor on. I have worn it down. And as you can see, it won't go off the end because the pad doesn't wear all the way out to the end. But in the meat of the rotor, you can see I've worn it down. So it is time to replace the rotor. And we'll get this rotor changed. Yeah. Shouldn't be too bad of a job, but in order for me to keep riding, I gotta change it. So here we go. Just gonna dive straight into this thing and uh, start taking the front wheel off and that way I can get to both the, uh, the calipers and the disc. And it's been a little while since I've worked on this bad boy. back here a little washer so while we're talking here and before I finish I should probably take the uh, speedo cable loose before you get too terribly started always that last little thing you don't want to be unhooking at the last minute But uh, what I was going to say here is, you know, it's fun working on our bikes and cleaning them and all that kind of good stuff. And when I got to Colorado here, life's just been a little wild right now because I finally got moved into a house. And, uh, but it's a 1980 house. The cool thing is it's an original one owner house. And uh, so that's been cool, but there was nothing, anything ever done to the house. It's bone stock. And uh, so it's all original. And currently, some of you guys follow me on my personal page. And uh, all you've seen is nothing but housework because that's all I've been doing and currently my house is still without a kitchen it's not without a kitchen it's just where the kitchen is there's absolutely nothing and the kitchen moved to the front room and then the kitchen moved to the garage and then it moved to and it's back in the house, but not in the appropriate kitchen space. So, all you really need is a 19. I believe this is a 12. Yep, 12. And a 
10 for the for the disc. And like I was saying earlier, one, this bike has made me use my front brake a lot more. You know, you hear guys telling you like, oh yeah, you gotta use your front brake more. The T-Dub, especially when I started filming, it makes me use the front brake a lot more because all you would hear is the back brake squealing. And that drove me nuts. So I'm like, all right, well the T-Dub's gonna make me a better front brake user. Consequently, when that happens, you wear out the front rotor more. One day, hopefully, when I get my house set up and the garage set up, I'll get a lift and uh, won't be working in the floor. But I can't complain because I get to do this at work. But the lifts at work here are for the four-wheel type of vehicles, not too but the boss is in the riding moto, so maybe he would like, yeah, let's get a lift for the shop. That would be rad. Forget the matter. Why am I fighting it? Those rotors don't look too bad. I don't know if you can see, but they still got some meat on them. But, uh... We'll see, maybe we uh, lube them back up and put them back in. All right, pause for the calls. All right, now we will uh, take the 10 millimeter and break loose all these. I know. I hear Justin, I hear Graham back at the shop and Eric at the shop like, man, just grab the, the power tool. I have power tools. I'm such an old school guy. But Justin just got this new, his old one. Kind of went ghost. So this new Mac 20 volt. It's the shizzle. Oh, that's so much easier. And that was less painful for you guys to watch. <laughs> that rotor is frozen on there. Sometimes you gotta put a little attitude on it. Yeah, it's like a thin crust pizza with an extra cheesy thick crust outer edge. I'll have to get you a close up shot, but like you saw in the beginning, I put the calipers on it and it said, whoa, out. So I will go get the freshy fresh rotor and we will commence putting that bad boy on. All right, so I got some new pads. I'll, I'll do a little comparison with the new pads and see, but new Freshy Fresh Rotor Yamaha 5XT-2582T-00. One piece, brand, brand new. Wow, yeah, I'll have to do some side comparisons but yeah this thing is definitely wore out Woo! but in regular t-dub fashion oh man I don't have my my grease I would like to re-grease all that it looks pretty good but typically I'll pack this thing pretty good grease if you don't want your speedo cable to just give out you gotta keep this thing greased grease is life oil is life 
lubrication. It's just one of those things. But, all right, looks fairly good. We might can roll with it. I'm sure I'll do another service in the interim down the road here. <clears throat> you will see a F on the rotor. That's facing out. That's how it came off. That's how you want to put it back on. That front, the original rotor, it had never been replaced. And what mileage am I at? I think I'm at 12,000. Yeah, 12,126 miles. And I'm a little overdue because I checked it uh, during the winter there. And uh, yeah, I should have changed it maybe two, 300 miles ago, maybe 400 miles ago. But yeah, I'm sure uh, you guys might get more mileage out of it. Um, so they are saying use Loctite. So Got some Loctite. So we're ready to carefully poke the toothpicks. And this is just part of the, following the uh, factory service manual. That thing is your, that's the Bible. It's your best friend. I don't care if it's your car, your motorcycle. I guess nowadays, even bicycles when you're, when you're, you can spend more on a bicycle than you can a T-Dub brand new. That's kind of, just pretty wild. But now, you want to just follow, you know, say, hey man, everyday life, you can't know everything. Yeah. I'm in Colorado Springs here. And we're 11 miles from the airport, and uh, we have a lot of military here. That's commercial that's going by right now. Um, but it's pretty wild. I get to see so much military aircraft flying around here. And uh, notice that I am not ram jamming this bad boy down because I'm just going to snug it and then I am going to use the factory specifications for torque and I want to say that it's around 9.4 foot-pounds of torque and uh, hopefully this little Midget of tightening I'm doing is not over nine pounds. I highly doubt it. But we will find out in just a moment. See, I'm not kidding. I'm using official paperwork, Mike Wazowski. All right, it says right there, 9.4 foot-pounds of torque, and it has Loctite. See the little LT bottle for the bolts. Loctite, oh yeah, so, like I was saying in the beginning of the video, you take a set of calipers and the lemon is 3.0 and I was under 3.0. It was like 2627, I can't remember, but I know I put three on there and I had slop. So that tells you something. So I will get the Porky Torque wrench Dial in nine poundages, and we will get the party going. I don't even know if this thing will do nine pounds. Let's see. So, zero. So that should be 10. All right. And let's see what, what kind of song she's singing. And even at that, I'm not just going straight to 10 pounds right out of the gate. 
or 9.4 pounds. I'm kind of bringing them up to snug. All together. All together now. They all got to work together, man. They all have a mission. So, like I was saying earlier, <laughs> uh, I didn't say it actually, I was thinking it and just didn't get to get it in, but I have been crazy obsessing over a YouTube channel called Obsessed Garage. And, oh my God, he's driving me insane with this. Uh, so this, this cat originally set out to just review every pressure washer on the market and he made such a ruckus that I didn't know, apparently he didn't know, that there was a governing body um, overseeing uh, pressure washer specifications sold here in the United States. <laughs> and it was rad, they had, uh, so during one of his upcoming tests, he brought one of the representatives on his channel and he basically told them, I don't care what your guys' specifications are or rules and regulations and everything. I'm testing every one of, you know, a certain pressure washer in a certain category. And I'm like, oh my God, this dude is punk rock. He had my, he, you know, that, that's the one that did it for me. Because um, he just said, yep, no, I'm, uh, I'm testing every pressure washer in this price category. And uh, of course, you know, he's like master detailer, you know, got it going on, killer shop. It's outrageous, you know, you wanna buy a pressure washer and spend $200 plus on nice hoses and swivels and, but I, I like the theory of where he's at. I can't afford his level, but he did in there he, he did a, a, a shootout with uh, price, price Point Pressure Washers, and this active company has been killing it, and he just released a video, which had me up way too late last night, um, about an active 2.0 uh, pressure washer. He's probably gonna hit the market at like three, four hundred dollars, like three fifty to four hundred dollars, and, uh, this thing is just going toe to toe with like twice the price pressure washers. And I'm like, all right, I was getting ready to buy that first active pressure washer. Um, Cause you know, I love pressure washering this thing and I need to pressure washer my Land Cruiser. And I got, you know, I got the daughter's two cars and the wife's car. So, you know, I went from like one little Ford Ranger in Alabama, the daughters had their cars and you know, I'd wash them, just hand wash them, whatever. Uh, but I had a pressure washer there, which one of them went out. My mom had one in the garage still, so I was using that one. But when I moved out here, all that stuff stayed behind. And, uh, but at some point, I'm going to really dial in my game. Uh, but if you're into any kind of detailing whatsoever, that, that dude is on point. And yeah, so check him out. Uh, what I did like is last night he also, well not last night, but during the process of watching that other video, I, uh, I watched his video regarding, um, apparently back in the day, which I haven't been watching him that long. So here you go. This is a, I'll show you from the side. This is a result of running too low of an air pressure and heavy front braking and riding on the street, it cups the knobs. Um, but I run too low of an air pressure so when I'm in the dirt, I can get a little bit softer feel. This is the uh, Shinko 2, not the 244, 211. Heck, I can't remember. I can't keep up with all these things. I have it on the website. I have it, you know, 
saved in my notes and whatnot. But you all know what tire this is. I've been running it. I chose this tire because it fits the look of an old school 1987 Yamaha Dual Sport. It just looks like that old school tire. That's why I went with it. And I know all these other guys are using all these other different tires, but I like the tire. I'm not mad at it. Could I use a, a more aggressive knobby? Yeah, maybe so. Maybe I will do that new, new flavor thing that these guys are doing. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I just like to ride and, and, uh, put down the miles. And I'm like super eager to get going here. So I'm kind of just winging it. Take 48. So I'll just show you on the, uh, on the speedo housing, there's a slot right here and there's a tab on the back of the bottom of the fork and it has to sit in between there so this thing can't rotate either direction. And then, as you can see, the front forks are sitting lower than the axle wheel so I gotta lift up but the back tire's on the ground. It's like, come on man, like who has the best uh, stand? Because usually I'm putting it on a stand like this and both wheels are 10 feet off the ground. You gotta be Arnold Schwarzenegger and do a deadlift. And I'm like. Oh, you little Cracker Jack box. Why are you fighting me? I'll just use my man rack as a back lift. I don't know if you can even see that, but it just worked. It's a fine line of getting everything all lined up in place. The struggle is real. <laughs> but I will say that the man rack on the front as being my savior. Okay, that's in the lock position, and it should be lift with the back on the man rack. And why now is my axle saying negative ghost rider? And that, my friends, is why having all the right tools whew, makes it worthwhile. The struggle. All right, so I can tighten down my front wheel. Whenever I find my other socket. Good and tight. Good and tight. Alright. Engage Spiro Cable. So yeah, what else has been going on with me? Nothing but sheet rocking and drywalling and working on the house and working at work. So it's Friday night, everyone went home and my wife had to go back to California. So 
I should be home working on the house. Oh, sorry, honey. The T-Dub calls. And I think the... Uh, there you go. It didn't want to drop in. You know, it's a square. Inside the round cable is a square head cable that fits into the speedo receiver and if it doesn't go all the way down just rotate your wheel just a little bit and that should give it enough to drop in and then you can tighten this bad boy up so last year I moved to Colorado moved into an apartment Went back home, brought a bunch of stuff out here. Um, you know, started the job right away. Got some rides. I was actually T-dubbing to work the most. My 80 Series Land Cruiser, um, the ADV80 on uh, Instagram, was still in California the whole nine months I was in Alabama. It was uh, hanging out with my buddies at Yoda Masters chilling um, so during that whole time I you know I'm working at Redline Land Cruisers now I gotta have my Land Cruiser here so went out there drove that back and um, yeah it's just been you know the housing market was crazy we, we finally got a place luckily my wife being ultra diligent on the matter while I'm working and uh, yeah we got a place so that's all I've really been kind of concentrating on is getting that all set up all right uh, I think it came off the yep a little speedo bracket so we'll get the front brakes hooked up and then we'll determine what's going on there Let's do a brake calipy check. So, half worn. I got a little bit of life. Yeah, look at that, that ain't bad. I still got some life on there. I got a couple hundred, more than a couple hundred miles. Maybe 200, 300, I don't know. It'll be one of those things I keep a close eye on. So now we will get to putting that brake caliper back together and uh, get this thing going. Luckily I did a brake flush on and all when I was at Dustin Motorsports. I mean, heck, I put a bunch of miles on this thing while I was in Alabama. So, technically it could, it could use a whole new flush flush. Lots of Subarus here in Colorado. Hear them every day. Flat fours. And you know me, I'm not mad at a Subaru at all. My rally background, my buddy Chris, he owns a Subi Works down in Temecula. And my buddy Recky01, he's got a Ultra done up Forester. So yeah. Subarus and Toyotas. They, they have a they have a uh, bad relationship together. Alright. Bump bump. 
Nothing like working on the T-Dub on a Friday night. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm putting the new battery in here. <laughs> I think this battery... I uh, robbed this battery out of my Honda Nighthawk before I sold it. I put a LiPo battery in, in that bike. And this time I just, um, through the shop here, we, ha we, we sell some interstate batteries. And interstate batteries is big here in Colorado Springs. So when I was talking to the guy there, he's like, oh yeah. We have motorcycle batteries. I'm like, oh, sweet. Then uh, I need to make a purchase for my little T-Dub. So I will be putting in a super generic, good old Interstate Batteries battery in here. It's nothing fancy. Uh, I would love to put like a super lightweight LiPo in here, but that's not in the deck of cards at the momentary. Uh, Oh yeah, there's the pen. It came right off the pen. So on the back, this little uh, cable bracket here, there's a pen on the back. And uh, you have to have it in the right position to make that uh, connection. To hold it up, because you don't want to Go riding around and looking like you got saggy socks on. Ah, okay, so much for a super tech article and all that. But I got the front disc on. I'm not putting in new pads just yet. I'll put those in at a later date. Um, when you're doing all that stuff, make sure you get your cable uh, clamp to sit. There's a pin on the back side of the fork here and the clamp has a hole in it, make sure you get that on there so this thing's not like saggy socks and sliding all the way down to the bottom. Uh, all right, so front disc is on. I'm gonna put a bat battery in here now. I uh, wanted to go with a LiPo, but I'm running an interstate battery because that's what we sell here at Redline Land Cruisers. And, uh, and talking with the guy one day, I'm like, hey, by chance, do you guys sell motorcycle batteries? And he, he, he was talking about how they distribute batteries. And uh, I'm like, oh. And, and I, apparently they're distributing their own batteries. But I didn't know Interstate had motorcycle batteries. And what do you know? Boom, I got one. Um, paid, I don't know, they're like 65 bucks or something. Uh, but anyhow, super excited about getting the T-Dub going again. My camera equipment, the batteries are all low. It's all like cutting off. I'm, I'm not even set up. I'm work it's Friday night. I'm working at the shop after hours. Long week. I just want to get my bike done and get going. But I will be posting all the technical specs on here for what you need to know about how to check um, for your front disc rotor. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go t dub it, man. That's... I like wrenching on my bike, but I just want to get the T-Dub and going. Hi! All right, for this next section, got to remove the seat. In order to get in there to the battery, take the seat off. You got to get to these little 10 millimeter bolts underneath your fender. And if you're in the field, that could be a muddy operation, and you're going to need a like a T-handle socket to to get it off. I know guys make wing nuts and all that kind of stuff. I don't like how they stick all the way down. And um, I have a little Motion Pro tool kit with a 10 millimeter T handle on it. So 
that'll that'll do me as needed. Oh, this is scary. Haven't looked underneath here in quite some time. Oh, all right. Not looking bad. And the battery. This is the battery I was saying that I pulled out of my Nighthawk. Strapped it in here. It's a smidge on the tall side. Hopefully this battery I put in here is a scratch bit shorter. What I'd really like to put in here is a lipo. But due to budgetary constraints. Yeah, you like that grounding? <clears throat> You've never seen this section of my T-Dub before. Let's just try. I don't think it's, yeah, that's right. I remember. It's got no hit, no hit whatsoever. So we gotta put some, put some juice, some juice to the goose. The T-Dub wants to go, but the battery said no. So installing an interstate battery, I will drop in the uh, part numeral. Oh man, all kinds of wires. So cute. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember that being the original battery. I do remember thinking that I, uh, oh, my, my uh, cleaning OCD just wants to go bananas in there. But yeah. I don't know if you guys noticed or not, if you've watched enough of my videos. I'm a little bit of a WD, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of a WD uh, 40 nerd. It does, uh, it does good things to your plastics. It rejuvenates and revitalizes. Yeah, this poor tank, it needs some uh, deep cleaning. Well, I don't know. Uh, this may be a whole nother mission on another mission day. I'll ultra detailing my uh, battery box from all the dust. I guess the big thing is you just don't want to have any rocks or debris inside your battery box when you drop in the new battery for fear of puncturization. Oh, I promise to give you a full detail cleaning bath one day. <laughs> That's funny. One day. I'm gonna go ride you hard real soon first. All right, so let me go get the battery to put in here. It's like I'm running straight live here. I have no idea if it's gonna fit. Is it gonna fit? I just went off of what they said was the actual specifications. It's a little bit bigger width wise. Okay, what's binding? I don't like that. Let's pull you back up. Oh, yeah. No practice runs, just straight content. I'm going for it. All right, that's gonna be the fit, man. When I drop this bad boy down in here, it is, uh, it's gonna be there. Oh, dang it, you crackerhead. Oh, yeah, now we're good. Oh, that's interesting. The other battery had square bricks. This has got upright post, so, okay, I guess we'll go the OG way. 
I'll hook up that little battery vent overflow tube just in case she wants to do something silly. Oh man. Yeah, alright. Gonna use DOS bolts. Well, well, well. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I, I hate, I'm not an electrical guy whatsoever. And I really don't like how that's gonna, okay, it's gonna go like that and then you guys are gonna have to sit on the back side. You're gonna have to get your act in gear. Yeah, wiring, it's a very tedious job. I don't mind the wiring and, and sorting through all that. I want it to be clean, I want it to look right. I want it to function right, most of all. Um, but as far as the electrical math of it all, I'm no good. I stink at that. T-Dub's kid, that's his forte. I just, uh... Do what I gotta do to make it go. But I know, uh... Having it done right and efficient are the keys for successful grounding. I really would like to have a washer on the back of that. Or if I flipped you around, you're a little smaller than that guy. Da da da. <laughs> I wish there was a way where. It could be live and instead of me reading the screens, you know, it's like push to talk. You guys could ask questions and and I don't like how that's gonna sit up that high. Maybe I flip it around and run it low. Low, low, low. How low can you go? Ooh, I don't like that because then that's gonna have it on the frame. Yeah, this is one of them situations where patience, patience, patience. You just won't go ride. But you're like, if I just get this hooked up, I can go ride. But I may literally be going, hmm, this battery's not going to work for me. Because it is obviously... Yeah, I guess it can sit up there like that. It's gonna have the rubber cup over it. All right, let's go with the original plan. Six hours later. You gotta lay down flat. Lay flat, be good, don't talk back. That's gonna be some slim shady if I ever seen. The battery did not come with the little bolt and nuts. So I'm using my existing ones, hopefully, but I don't think I don't think there's gonna make it. I think I might have to go over to the toolbox and see about getting a less less big hunky square nut. Alright, I'm gonna turn the camera off. I know it's overheating. I went for a scratch longer of a nut, you know, or scratch longer bolt, bigger washer, because these guys, while they could be acting as a washer, I think it needs a little bit. No, nope, I'm gonna take that dude off and pretend I didn't say that. Put that guy in there like that. Oh yeah, a little bit more nut on there and then let's see if I can actually get <laughs> yeah if I can just get that to sit up there and of course I messed myself up because it doesn't have the uh, Phillips ability 
but I can get a little wrench on it. I just got to get the nut started. And that is one tricky operation. You know, there's not always a magical solution. Just come on, please participate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, negative Ghost Rider. Yeah, see this is what happens when you're trying to film. You want to film, you want to do cool content and all that, and you're not prepared. You don't, you didn't test fit all your product. You're just doing it live, but guess what? This is like, this is like how it is in the real world in the garage, right? Yep. The real world. No fake believe here. This is the real struggle. And what's happening here is I was like, oh, since I'm over there at the box, I got this flange nut serrated. That would actually like be really good to help hold it tight. But getting it on there in this very peculiar tight situation is uh a feet within itself. It's like if I get it on there it'll be good. But the big thing is is the if there's a whole lot in if in a multitude of directions. Come on little baby you can do it. Looks like I gotta get the oh 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 yeah See, senor, we can do this. All right, so you're hooked up. All right. And hopefully that uh, other side won't be so... Uh, It's uh, such a fight. Dun dun dun! All right, batteries in. One side's down. I'm feeling confident. How rad! If I get to fire this bad boy up tonight, that'd be sweetness. That looks like a pretty good connection. All right. Let's just go ahead and strizz up you down. Because when I get that ground on, I'm going to be like, wah, wah, wah. of me I finished that battery up real quick it was just uh, kind of fighting me the camera was overheating yeah everything but uh, guess what watch this boom what what oh. oh oh you don't have one of those enduro plates sorry you should no you shouldn't you should want to I don't know in case you ever, when your T-dub falls over, but look, I have a tail light, which means I have headlight. I don't know if you can see the JNS lighting up over there, but, but, uh, yeah. Cue music.
It's tea dub time, folks. It's tea dub time. 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 Yeah. Oh my God. I'm so excited.